With that, that said, uh, let's, let's get to it. Okay, you can do some really cool math with this stuff. You agree that accounts receivable is some fraction of your revenue that you legally booked for the year that you're waiting to receive. So let's say if you're Amazon.com and you're waiting to receive $1 billion in revenue, and you book $10 billion in revenue on your P&L, $1 billion in receivable divided by $10 billion in revenue, right? So uh, $1, one billion in, in, in receivables uh, divided by $10 billion in, in revenue. Uh, so $1 billion divided by 10 means they're waiting to receive about 10% of the revenue. Do you agree? If you want to know how many days worth of revenue that is, just multiply it by the number of days in the year, and that would be about 36 days of revenue for them. <coughs> right? So the, how much of my revenue I'm waiting to receive out of my total revenue I booked? If I want to know how many days that fraction represents, multiply it by 360 days in the year, and it'll tell me how many days that that represents. It's a measure of efficiency, because if I'm Amazon.com and I'm collecting my receivables every 36 days, that means my customers are paying me at the end of every month. If this is 180 days, they're not paying me for six months, which means I'm probably gonna have cash flow problems. Now that, that, that mathematical logic extends to all these formulas, right? Um, let's say I'm Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, and I have a um, billion dollars of inventory in my warehouse. Let's say I made $10 billion in drugs for the year, which is my cost of goods. One billion in inventory divided by 10 billion in COGS. I have 10% of my COGS sitting in my warehouse. How many days of COGS does it take to turn over? It's called inventory turnover days, right? How many days it takes to flip that? Multiply by the number of days in a year, that would be 36 average inventory. That's pretty good. My drug's only sitting there for 36 days. What if that gets up to, if I see that creeping up, like in, a, you know, in, a, in this kind of economy, maybe 90 days instead of 36 days, I'll cut back the speed I'm making stuff with. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, a company like Amazon.com, with, with computers now, they can run this equation by barcode. So every book has a barcode. They can figure out how much of the book they bought for the year um, or the quarter, and they can figure out um, how much uh, of the inventory the book is in the warehouse, and they can see how many days they're selling the book. So 36, 36 inventory turnover days means every 36 days the book is going. So you might see the Harry Potter book being turned over every 14 days, and then some novel is in there for 300 days which is nobody's buying, you have to get rid of it. And it'll tell them how to manage your inventory. Uh, oh, a, a company that's very, very famous who did a very good job with this, and I thought will talk about it in your textbook, is Dell Computers. One of the reasons why Dell Computers did so well was because one of the things computer companies were doing was they were stocking a bunch of computer pieces and parts, <laughs> and it's very expensive because you need the warehouses, then you need people to work it and manage it, and then with computers, every two years they go obsolete. So they had all, at some point when a new technology comes out, it's like playing musical chairs. They're gonna get left holding the bag on some components that are obsolete, right? So computer companies were losing, always losing a lot of money because some new technology came out and then whatever inventory they had of the obsolete technology was well, pretty much depreciated significantly. So what Dell Computer did by customizing the, making the computers to order, was they kept very low inventory, and then as the orders came in, they just got the parts flown in real time. And you'll read in the Bonnie book, they were able to have a, the lowest inventory turnover days in the industry. And so they saved money by not having as many warehouses, by not having as many employees, and then they never really got caught holding absolute inventory. Kind of cool. And it, that's one of the reasons why they were able to uh, pretty much do so well for, for so long. Um, accounts payable, same ideas, average payable days. How many days does it take you to pay your bills? If you're paying your bills every 30 days, that's pretty good. If it's 180 days, you, you're probably gonna be headed for default. Okay, um, so why don't we do this? Why don't we take a look at our Excel model? Um, and before we, before we do it together, I'm just gonna show you guys uh, just make a couple of comments, and I just want to do some stuff here before we, we do this together, okay? Um, so how much money did our customers owe us at the end of 07? Right here. 1350? Do you agree that this 1350 that they owed us is some fraction of the revenue we booked on our income statement for 07? Okay, 
So they, well, I'm going to do it one way, and I'm going to share another way to do it as well. So they owe me, they owe us thirteen fifty at the end of 07 in receivables. That's revenue. It's some fraction of the 07 revenue on the income statement. So I'm just going to go over there. I'm going to link it to the 07 revenue. And then I want to know that fraction, how many days does that fraction represent? So I multiply it by 360 days. And it's about 43 days worth of revenue. So every 43 days of collecting this much receivables, it, it says I collect that much money every 43 days. And it also tells me that it's taking my customers 43 days to pay me, which is about six weeks. <clears throat> if that is that bad or good, it depends on the industry. Six weeks is probably average. If it was 90 days or 180 days, they're not paying me for six months, which is a problem. So it's a measure of my efficiency. Okay, now you see I got 43.1 days there. We can actually get a more accurate number. Um, do you agree that in finance, the end of one year is the beginning of the next? So what Advani is going to tell you, tell us to do then, is uh, he's going to say. At the end of 06, they owed us $1,200, which is what they owed us in the beginning of 07. And then we also know what the end of 07 is 12 months later. This is not wrong what we're doing. It's just that it's not, t as we could get more accurate because 1350 is the end of year number and we're using the end of year number as an average. Why don't we take the actual average? So let's take the actual average. Are, is every, have you, most of you used the average function in Excel before? Let's just practice the average function first. So just write equal sign in there and then write out the word average. I don't think ABG works. You have to actually write out equal sign average. Open parentheses, right? The end of 06 is the beginning of 07, comma, 12 months later we know what the end of 07 is. So average open parentheses D7 comma E7. Close parentheses, enter. See, it's a little bit more accurate. This is the end of year number, this is the actual average. We, we were owed $1,275,000 at any point in time. Sounds good? That, now that's not the day. So now I want to know how many days does it take you to collect that money on average? So uh, by the way, this is really what you want to use your formula bar, right? When you want to edit formulas. So right now, let's go up to the formula bar and divide it by the 2007 revenue times 360. So this was the money they owe us is a fraction of revenue we booked for the year for 2007. And I'm going to times it by 360 before I press enter. So when I press enter, it just calculates correctly. And it's 40 days. 40.7 days. Right? It, it's, it's kind of really important, don't you think? Uh, so I, we know how many days it takes us to pay us on average and how efficient we're being collected. Once we get this, why don't we just uh, drag or paste it across to 08, and it looks like it's 40 days in 08. Uh, on the model, they're assuming 45 days. You know, to be honest, it's an assumption. It's probably a little bit high, but we'll leave it. It's a conservative. I mean, I guess if I was doing this on my own here, I'd probably say 40, 40 days or something, or 40, 40, probably 41 days. But let's